Hi, I'm JP. I work for Horsepower Freaks on the E46 M3, and I'm making the turbo kit. One of the things that we're doing on this turbo kit is making a new intake manifold, and I want to just talk about the reason why we're doing an intake manifold and the importance. Uh, the M3 has an interesting angle on the engine, and it actually gives you a lot of room for the intake manifold, where it doesn't give you that much room for the exhaust manifold. This is the stock intake. Uh, it's pretty good for a naturally aspirated design. The problem that we're having with it is just it's plastic. So we don't want to have to use a plastic intake manifold because you might have a problem with leaking out of the seams and stuff like that. What we did instead is we wanted to design something that's going to be aesthetically pleasing and also going to make a lot of performance power. So the, the things that are important when we make an intake manifold is a, a few things. Number one, runner length, runner diameter, uh, plenum volume, and also fluid dynamics. So our first start was just to make a sheet manifold intake here. This is the one we've been using. This makes this one made 670 horsepower, 13 and a half pounds of boost. It's a good design, but uh, we thought we could improve on it. We want to make a ultimately we wanted to make a cast intake manifold. This one though was our first stab at it. We wanted to see what we could do with it. Uh, the thing that you'll notice right off the bat is the runner length. It's pretty short. You typically shorter runner lengths, you're going to get more horsepower. And what we soon found out is that this engine actually is very strong. It took 670 horsepower without a problem. So horsepower actually isn't a problem on this car. Uh, so we decided why not try to go for a little bit more torque. So what we decided to do was do a cast design. And this is actually the design that we did. Now this is a rapid prototype of the design. And basically a rapid prototype is just uh, what you do is uh, you design something in CAD, which I'll show you right here. This is, this is um, SolidWorks 2006. This is actually the design right here. I, I drew this up and um, then we sent it off to a company who does rapid prototyping. This is how it came back. And this is just basically little sections. The, the ultimate, the Ultimately, the, the final design will be aluminum. We'll have a couple different options. You can get it in uh, wrinkle black, or you can get it in polished aluminum. That will be the optional upgrade, the, the polished liquid. Uh, I'll tell you a couple reasons why we chose what we did. Um, the very important thing here is runner length and runner diameter. Now, you'll see that this is actually a little bit longer diameter, uh, sorry, longer length and bigger diameter than this. With the longer runner length, we're going to get more torque. And typically with longer runner lengths you'll get more torque but less power, but we're going to make more power on this as well. And the way that we're going to do that is actually with added volume in the plenum and also added uh, diameter in this runner. It actually does have a taper, two, uh, it's two and a half degrees, which is optimal for fluid dynamics. Whereas this one, this intake manifold was just a straight pipe that, they, uh, that we used and um, it seemed to work, but we want to improve the design. A couple things that we also wanted to do once we found out that we could make this much. Let me show you the dynagraph real quick before I go through anything else. This is the dynagraph that we had. We had six, this is 667 horsepower. You can see here that the horsepower isn't letting up. This is the reason why we wanted to try for more torque. We can still make this power here, but we want to actually get a little more torque right here. So one thing that we did notice after the dyno was... We like the, the fact that this thing can make a lot of power. The problem is it's 11 half to compression, the 11 half to 1 compression ratio, so the only way to really make the power reliably is to use methanol injection. So that'll be an optional thing for, for our customers. What I did on this intake manifold is I made a, a, a boss right here, and you'll see we even labeled it right here. It says methanol. So when you get the, the turbo kit without this option, this will be plugged. Um, but this, when we have the methanol fogger here, gives a good atomization to all cylinders equally. Um, with this design, the problem with this design, if we were to put the, the fogger right here, because you want to actually put this as far back away from the engine as you can for good atomization. If we were to put it here, because of the wet flow characteristics of methanol, the flow would not actually want to take a 120 degree roughly angle right here. It would actually want to go more to cylinders 4, 5, and 6 instead. So we're going to use methanol. That's one of the reasons, one of the upgrades that we've done on this manifold over this one. 
You can also see here we have an uh, intake air temperature sensor right here, labeled, and this is the idle air control. And we put the blow-up valve right in the front. So I'll go out right now and show you exactly where this is going to fit on the car, and I'll show you how this thing fits really nicely. The other thing that we did is we added an oil dipstick location mount. This one previously didn't have it, so we ended up zip-tying it. We didn't want to do that, so we actually have a mount for that now. And so right now we can go out and go check it out on the car. Okay, now we're out in the car, and I just wanted to point out a couple things with fitment and stuff like that, and I want to show you how this thing fits really nicely. Uh, please excuse some of the mess we have here. We have some wires hanging out and some of this, but the main factor here is just to show you how it fits. First thing you'll notice is the hole right here for the blow-off valve. This is where it's going to go. Normally there's a fan shroud that goes right here. I don't have it on the car right now. That will You will maintain that still, so there won't be any overheating problems. The other thing I want you to see is the idle air control still hooks up right under here without any problems. There. So you still have your idle air control. You'll notice this goes right down here and meets the intercooler piping. And you'll also notice the oil dipstick is right here, mounted fine. And the last thing I wanted to point out is the strut bar. You do have clearance here. Without a problem, this will not hit. And that's about it.